The second floor of the hospital is my favorite floor as a surgeon. Uh, it's called the interventional platform, and it's really a concept that uh, we've helped develop here at Stanford that looks at how to create the most adaptable environment for the technological changes that are happening within the types of interventional procedures we have within the hospital. Currently, hospitals run between five and six different types of interventional services, whether that be the operating room, uh, interventional imaging suites, cardiac catheterization suites, angiography suites, endoscopy suites. And all of these actually serve very similar functions and the activities are very similar, but they are not usually in the same location or managed uh, in an integrated fashion. So all of them require preoperative care. All of them have their interventional areas, their procedure rooms. They all provide postoperative care and they have waiting and amenities functions for families and patients. Uh, this concept of the interventional platform puts all of those elements together in one integrated service. So we have one area for family waiting. We have one area for registration. We have a combined preoperative and postoperative area to the building. And then all of these interventional suites sit within one integrated service model on the floor. Uh, this is a lot of function to put on one floor of the building, and this is our largest floor in the hospital, equivalent to close to three acres of space is on this floor. Uh, why do we do this? There's a number of reasons. One, it's simpler for the patient and the family. They don't need to find five or six different areas if they're coming for various procedures. They go to one place. It's very simple. Oftentimes, these procedures involve one or more of these types of procedure spaces. So currently, we have patients having procedures in different places at, on the same day, or they're being transported from one area to the other. So that certainly simplifies things. But let's get a little more into the weeds here. In a preoperative and postoperative function, if we had five separate areas like we wouldn't have now, and a service as big as this, we would require about 140 spaces for preoperative function and postoperative function. By bringing these services together and integrating preoperative functions, which are busiest during the morning, postoperative functions, which are busiest during the afternoon, and having flexibility between those spaces, we only need 70 positions to do this, or half the number of positions for patients to be. It also cuts down on our staff as well as the square footage of these areas. It also allows all of our staff to be cross-trained and integrated so that as technology changes, our nurses and, and uh, anesthesia staff know how to respond to various different types of procedures. So right now we're planning three open cardiac operating rooms and six adjacent catheterization labs. As we go more and more to non-invasive or minimally invasive procedures, all we have to do is change the equipment in that operating room to catheterization equipment. We're only altering one room. We're not building new pre-op areas, new post-op areas, new admitting areas, all those other things. So we can respond from a facility standpoint in about a year to technological changes versus five or six years and for a significantly less cost.